We could use your help keeping the Omaha History Podcast going. Please consider becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month. Go to patreon.com slash Omaha. That's P-A-T-R-E-O-N. It'll help pay the light bill. Welcome to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Each week, Adam takes you on a guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past. In the 1860s, the Union Pacific established its shops north of downtown Omaha, and Scandinavians came to work there. The largest population to settle in Nebraska well, was in North Omaha. Scandinavians also had homes in other parts of Omaha, but between 1860 and 1919, the vast majority uh, lived north of Dodge and west of uh, 30th Street. So, Adam, tell us more about the Scandinavians in North Omaha. Norwegian, Danish, and Swedish people make up the brunt of one population, one group uh, that are called Scandinavians. Uh, these Scandinavians come from those countries. They come from a few other countries there in Northern Europe, and they share all kinds of heritage. They share old words and old gods and old stories and have old heritage that crosses country lines. But all that changed again when they got to North Omaha, uh, way back when, you know, the railroad and all these other sources, uh, including the Mormons and, uh, the other industries around the city brought in Scandinavians as workers, as hard workers, who were anxious and ambitious and ready to take on America in its fullest form. Their impact is still felt today all across the community, whether it's from the Viking ship in the Minnelusa neighborhood to North High School's Viking mascot to the Sons of Norway running stuff in their way to the Ventilist Park in Florence. Uh, all of these different kind of Scandinavian elements are still there, even if hidden, they're still there um, all across the community. So let's talk about why. In the 1840s, Mormons, they set out from uh, New York State and Illinois, and they were going to go west uh, to Salt Lake to form their own community. And along the way, they stopped in Florence, uh, which was then called the Winter Quarters. Uh, and they built streets and houses and shacks and stores. And for the next three years and more, Mormons from around Europe and Eastern U.S. poured through the area. A few of them stayed and a few of them moved on, but they definitely included the Swedes and the Danes and the Norwegians who had immigrated for their new religion, uh, as well as other people who were starting to pour into the community for other reasons. The Mormons were a really large source of those initial Scandinavian immigrants into North Omaha. When the Union Pacific established its shops, even though they flooded all the time and they were built on flimsy, flimsy kinds of promises and the hopes and dreams of tomorrow by people like uh, George Train and others, uh, the Scandinavians came to work in the shops and they came to build the railroads. Like a lot of other European ethnic immigrants, lots of Scandinavians saw Omaha as kind of a passageway instead of a stopping point. They went out and founded towns across Nebraska like Axtell and Danbrog. Danvirk and Gothenburg and Holdridge and Malmo and Newman Grove and a dozen other places where that were real strongholds of Scandinavian culture in all those different countries. But eventually, lots of those folks ended up coming back to Omaha and more Scandinavians came in from the east. And by 1880, Omaha had around 2,500 uh, folks from the Scandinavian region. In a population of only 30,000, Scandinavians were a big role in Omaha already by the 1880s. The U.S. Census actually shows Scandinavian immigration was highest in Omaha between 1890 and 1910. By 1930, almost 10% of Omaha's population was Scandinavian-born. I mean, the assimilation of Swedes and Danes and Norwegians was already happening. The language was changing. The churches were becoming integrated with other Europeans. And really the footprint of Swedes and other Scandinavians was mm, lessening, but it was still taking hold. We had places in Omaha and North Omaha that were so heavily held by these ethnic groups and these nationalities that they took on the names of the culture. Little Stockholm was a thing, Steve, right at North 21st Street from Cass to Cumming. 
all the way to 18th. That whole neighborhood was called Little Stockholm because it was packed with Scandinavian immigrants. They were bricklayers. They were carpenters and tailors, cement workers and dairymen, and of course, railroad men. In the second generation, workers filled the UP yards and the Ford assembly plant. So the Scandinavians really had a hold on the area. There was a Swedish Methodist church on North 18th. Uh, that moved to 23rd and Izzard. They actually moved further into North Omaha uh, with a church that's actually still there, even though it was closed in the 1930s. The original Scandinavian Seventh-day Adventist church at 18th and Coming still stands there right now. You can go and see it today. Other churches were Trinity Episcopal, Swedish Baptist, First Scandinavian Baptist, and the Swedish Holiness Church, as well as Mission Covenant and the Swedish Salvation Army. Just so much strength in that community. Uh, So many institutions that were so important. Danes, you know, they spread out all around Omaha. And Danes actually started their own cemetery that today is called the Danish Springwell Cemetery. Uh, And they had the majority of the population in the little village of DeBolt, including the Springville School and a couple other institutions that were, were out there and survive in some form right now. There was a Swedish neighborhood that spanned along Florence Boulevard uh, from Cumming Street all the way up to Lake with a lot of distinct architecture. And there are houses and buildings still there today that reflect that Scandinavian influence. Norwegians and Danes lived up and down 24th and 16th and and throughout north the near north side eventually. But in the early 1900s, uh, there was a Norwegian Danish Methodist Episcopal Church uh, that built a building at 24th and Decatur. That's actually still standing there today. One of the neatest contributions of Scandinavians was um, by John Bloom. Uh, Bloom moved into North Omaha from Iowa, where his Scandinavian family, where his Swedish family uh, was really influential. And he moved into North Omaha and continued his influence for almost 100 years. He worked North Omaha and had a beautiful shop, uh, originally at North 17th and coming, then Uh, He had a shop there, but he had a a monument manufacturing business at Florence Boulevard in Ames that stayed there all the way through last year. So super important contributions. And that's not all of them. The Pella Danish Lutheran Church was started on North 26th Street in the North in the Long School neighborhood in 1888. In 1894, they built a new church at uh, 30th on 30th Street that is actually still standing today. And it goes on and on, Steve. The Norwegian Danish Evangelical Lutheran Church eventually moved to 26th and Hamilton in 1916. They celebrated a huge, big party of the Danish Constitution. And it was just really exciting. Um, Even though the congregation didn't last, uh, very influential, very influential. Today, a lot of, uh, we can still see remnants of a lot of professional Scandinavian families. Aside from these working class families, we can see the professional Scandinavian families influence on neighborhoods like the Gifford Park neighborhood around 36 and Cass. Uh, so that impact on North Omaha really was real and tangible. Super exciting thing happened as those Swedes began to amass with the Norwegians and Danish and others. But some frustrating things happened too. In the 1920s, uh, there was a white flight that happened from the near north side. And f- these Scandinavian families moved from that immediate area between Cumming and Lake, and they moved all the way north of Miller Park into the Minnelusa region. And we saw institutions like the Prettiest Mile Club established, which eventually became called the Viking Ship, uh, as kind of a nod to that Scandinavian heritage. Um, and other neighborhoods like Florence and Central Park and Benson became holdouts for the Scandinavian community. Uh, When North High School was opened in 1924, it was almost natural for their mascot to be the Golden Vikings to really celebrate that culture more. Even the churches moved north with uh, Trinity Lutheran coming to 25th and Ames in 1890 and again moving north to uh, next to Miller Park. After that, the Lutheran Church of Our Redeemer moved up to 24th and Grand around 1914. So it was ironic that Scandinavians who traveled through winter quarters in 1846, their descendants actually moved down to Omaha and then eventually moved back up to Florence. At the end of World War II, the Scandinavians in Omaha became the most upwardly mobile in their profession. They became the doctors and the lawyers and the business managers. And there were waves of commercial industrial development that led to their success. 
yeah, there was a Norwegian architect named Berger Kvin, Kvin Old, who designed houses and buildings that stand around Omaha today. And, uh, you know, there were Danes uh, all around Omaha who loved their countryman, Ernest Norden, who conducted the Omaha Symphony in the 20s and 30s. Maybe the most successful Scandinavian in Omaha was Carl Swanson, the founder of Swanson Company, who made our Swanson frozen food dinners for a long time. He was born in 1879 in, Omaha, in Sweden and moved to Omaha in 90, 1896. So a pretty exciting population, pretty exciting group of folks. When uh, uh, Swanson's company was the, one of the largest creameries in the U.S., uh, he sold out and uh, his family sold out and eventually ConAgra took over. And well, we know the way that story goes. Uh, of course, another suite who was super popular and notable was John Engdahl who had a body company. And although that seems innocuous today, uh, he was noted for being super successful for a long time because of his business at 18th in California and his influence throughout the community. Norwegians, Danes, and Swedes had all these different businesses, had all these different churches and lots of wonderful things going on all around the community. Maybe the most uh, pro prolific and notable of uh, the Scandinavians in North Omaha would have been uh, Mayor Sorensen himself. He was a proud Dane and was mayor of the city in the 60s and the founder of the Boys Club in Omaha. Uh, and, of course, the namesake of the Sorensen Parkway today. So all these churches and all these institutions and all these people and all this success led to all kinds of different uh, traditions that are still honored right now. You know, Ventilus Park in, in uh, Florence is one of these notable places where Scandinavian footprint can still be seen uh, in North Omaha. And uh, lots of different events are still happening around the city that can be celebrated. If folks take a look at NorthOmahaHistory.com and look up Scandinavian history, you can see a long uh, listing of social clubs and newspapers and even the cemetery um, that was founded by the Scandinavians who came to Omaha. There were, there were hospitals, Steve. I mean, we have the, of course, Emmanuel Lutheran Hospital, which was super popular and still exists today in that form even though it's long removed from its Scandinavian roots, um, it still stands. And we also had the uh, Scandinavian Mission Hospital that was on 24th Street for a long time and uh, left a long footprint. Even the Pella Danish Lutheran Church at 30th and Corby ended up selling their church to become Hope Lutheran. And that's an African-American population, but the church still reflects and shows those Scandinavian roots in its architecture. And you can go and look at that right now. Unfortunately, Scandinavian identity is kind of being lost today. There's some struggles to maintain it. Uh, Dana College north of Omaha and Blair just shut down in 2010. And uh, the Trinity Lutheran Seminary that was up there, of course, left in 1960 to merge with another seminary. But there are still attempts to keep that Scandinavian heritage alive in Omaha, especially north Omaha and beyond. Uh, this, like I said, the uh, Spring Old Danish Cemetery is still open. The, in central Omaha, there's a Danish Brotherhood in America headquarters. And even though it's being used for another purpose, it's listed on the National Register of Historic Places for its contributions to the Scandinavia, Scandinavian influence in Omaha. Even an old Scandinavian newspaper uh, from Omaha is still being published. It's Dendanske Pioneer, and it's still being published today, even though not in Omaha. It's uh, seen around the country as being important to the Scandinavian culture still today. Yeah, so lots of really exciting evidence and, and heritage and different elements. I have a long tour um, that's on the website on NorthOmahaHistory.com that folks can take a look at and really see and feel and begin to understand that Scandinavians in North Omaha left an impact that's still being felt today, and that's pretty exciting. Thanks for listening to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Join us next week as Adam takes you on another guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past.